cross site scripting a vulnerability that allows an attacker to inject malicious xss or javascript code into the web application it seems to be a very you know uh, easy type of vulnerability but sometimes it can be very difficult to find it when we have a lot of web application firewall or let us say we have content security policy implemented right which is also known as csp so in this video i'm going to show you that how we can bypass csp and how we can utilize a new tool which is known as xss first which is absolutely open source tool and free of cost we are going to go ahead and use that and we can see that what is this particular tool is offering and using this particular tool we'll be able to find xss and we'll be able to bypass csp on a live target but as always before going to this video if you haven't checked out my previous video then please go ahead and check it out the link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen and now with that being said let us get started okay so before we dive deep into this particular video let us try to understand about our target okay and obviously this is a live target so let's try to see what is happening in this particular target right and then we'll try to understand what is csp and then the tool which is xss first so right over here you can see we have this target and we have the parameter title and in the title we have this value details right and if you take a closer look you can clearly see that the details you know whatever values present on this uh, uh, title parameter is getting reflected right over here correct so what i can do is i can simply change this to any random value let us confirm this so let's say random okay and you can see it is getting reflected as it is right now uh, my next goal will be to inject a uh, uh, html tag okay like h1 test h1 tag close let's hit enter and perfect you can clearly see over here that this particular value test is getting reflected as it is right which means that it is accepting the html characters and it is not sanitizing the dangerous characters given by the user or the attacker right now the final thing is that i am simply going to add the you know javascript code which is let's say script alert one and script tag close what happened if you take a closer look you can see that this time the you know tag didn't got you know like executed properly right this time we are not seeing the javascript code or we are not seeing the you know alert one popped up why is that let's try to go ahead and try some other payloads for example let's go and change this to you know img src equals to x on error alert one let's hit enter and again you can see there's something very interesting happening you can see that the image tag is getting like rendered over here right but whatever the js code we are going to write after the you know uh, attribute or the event like on error alert one or document dot domain or ul or something like that you can clearly see that it is not getting executed right so this is the you know uh, what you can say power of content security policy and if it is implemented in the correct way then trust me it is very difficult to bypass it right so basically csp what what csp does is it will you know prevent the user from you know giving or in giving the you know js code as an input right it's not going to uh, you know uh, what you can say it is not going to uh, execute that particular code like if i type control plus shift plus c okay and if i go to console you can clearly see what it's saying is that if we take a closer look you can see that refuse to execute inline script right so basically it is not allowing us to execute the script because it is written in their policy that we cannot execute the script by just giving the input right so this is the reason why we are not getting cross scripting over here now let us try to go ahead and use this particular tool which is xss first and let's try to see that how we can you know bypass this particular csp and how we can use xss first in terms of you know finding interesting cross site scripting vulnerabilities let's go ahead and check it out so now let us go ahead and install this particular tool which is known as xss first which is uh, you know presented by asperis security and i also happen to be a contributor in this tool and the best thing about this tool is that this tool is not 
only going to like help you to automate XSS, but also it will, you know, it can be used to like first for specific values, right? Like if you have watched my previous video on XSS, then you know that uh, when we're trying to, you know, look for some certain XSS bypasses, we'll look for which of the tags are allowed, which of the attributes are allowed and all those things, right? So this is a tool that is going to help you in that scenario. Apart from that, the validation of XSS vulnerabilities is quite good in this particular tool as well. So let us go ahead and use this tool and let's see how it's going to help us to find the cross site scripting vulnerability. So I'm going to copy the link. Okay. And yeah, don't worry. This link will be also given in the description. Okay. And now let me just go ahead and create a directory mkdir. I'm going to give this as video. Sorry, video. Let's go inside it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply type git clone and let me just paste it out. Okay. Let's wait for a few seconds. And as you can see, the repository has been cloned right over here. Let's go to XSS first. XSS first. Here we are. And we have a lot of files over here, right? So what we first need to do is we simply need to install this requirements.txt file. So let us go ahead and do that. I'm going to type pip3 stall minus r and requirements.txt and this is going to install all the requirements or all the packages that are necessary to use this tool. Okay. And once you have done that, what we are going to do next is we are going to execute this linux.sh file since we are using Kali Linux, right? So let's go ahead and type bash linux.sh, hit enter. And now what it's going to, it is saying is that uh, we need to provide the root password right so whatever root password you are you have like used just go ahead and type that hit enter and then it's going to do the rest of the things for us which is to install chromium as well as chrome driver now this is something which will be very useful when we are you know trying to validate the accesses right so let's wait for it to complete and then we're going to proceed and once again you can see that chromium as well as chromium driver is already the newest version and with that we have successfully installed uh, chromium chromium driver and xss first into our machine now we are good to go so let's see how we're going to use this tool okay so now we are actually good to go so let us go ahead and see how we can use this tool so i'm going to type python 3 and you can see these are all the options available to us right we can specify the urls the custom payload file if we have any custom payload file we can specify the uh, you know specific parameter that we want to test on uh, then we can like uh, see the detailed output using this verbose option. We can specify custom headers. We can validate the XSS and we can save the output to a file. We can also increase the threads so that the you know overall speed of the tool will get increased as well. And we can specify a custom tag if you want to do the testing, right? And we can also set the limit, right? So let's say that you know you only want to test uh, first five events and first five tags. So you can just go ahead and use this limit. Okay. So what this tool is doing is like let me clear it out so if you go to the source okay you can see we have three interesting things okay first we have tags and if i show you what is inside tags you can see we have all the tags known to html right so what it is it is doing is it is first of all it's going to test whether how the application is handling the dangerous characters based on that it's going to test the tags it's going to see which of the tags are getting allowed then it's going to see along with the tags which are the events which are getting allowed right so let me show you what is inside event so we have a lot of you know events event handler over here like on mouse error on mouse over on pause on play or something like that and then by combining all of this is going to look for the payloads which is inside this payloads.txt file right let me show it to you you can see we have all these payloads over here based on the certain tags and certain attributes and then it's going to see which of these uh, you know uh, payloads are getting reflected as it is right and if you can you know specify the minus capital v option it's going to validate it whether the you know reflection is executing the xss or not okay so let us go ahead and use this tool now i hope you are able to understand this if not then i will recommend you to check out my video in which i have shown you that how we can find xss in modern application in 2024 okay let me clear it out and now let's go ahead and use this so i have pasted the url now what we want to do is we want to specify custom tags so i'm just going to specify tag and let's say that i want to test if the script tag is reflecting as it is or not okay and then i'm going to set the limit limit to let's say five because i just wanted to you know 
uh, check the first five events okay this is just to speed up the things if you don't want to speed up things then you can simply go ahead and you know use it uh, using the default settings okay and i'm going to set the threads to let's say 10 and uh, let's add verbose because i also want to see what is uh, going on right let us hit enter and let's see what will happen after that okay let's hit enter now okay i think i'm getting some error let me just check it yeah okay i have forgotten the to like specify the file name xss first dot py and we are good to go okay so let us wait for it to finish and then we're going to see what exactly it is giving us okay so you can see it has finished its process and if you take a closer look what you can see first is that uh, it has checked the csp and it has found some of the misconfiguration okay and if you intercept the request of the same url in burp suit like in my case we can clearly see what the content security policy is saying okay and this is exactly what this tool is doing is finding any misconfiguration in the csp okay so you can see what it says that vulnerable font src is set to star asterisk which basically means that it uh, the application is allowing uh, users or you know uh, the application is allowing itself to load fonts from any other sources similarly it can it can load images from any other sources but the interesting part for us is that we can also load script from any other sources as per you know this tool right so you can clearly see and we can also load the style src so that's also good but over here we are interested in finding accesses right so we are basically interested in this one you know like finding the script source so basically if we load script from any other sources it is going to execute as per the content security policy right so this tool was able to find csp misconfiguration okay and apart from that you can also see that it has tested these four parameters out of that it is saying that parameter title is not handling the dangerous characters and then it is also like given us that parameter script is getting reflected as it is and it has also given us that you know all of the events are also getting reflected as it is which is very interesting because let us say in scenarios where you won't be able to find you know xss payloads these are the information that will help you to understand exactly which things are getting blocked and which things are you know allowed these things are going to help you to form your own custom payloads which you can also rather you know later later you, you can use it into this tool and then you can automate your you know xss process okay so the beauty about this tool is that it is not just a you know normal automation tool it's like a fuzzing tool it is similar to you know like uh, how we use f for web reconnaissance so it is kind of like that okay i hope you're able to understand this and you can say that it is saying that uh, got something and you can see it has given us the link and as we already know that this is not going to execute right because they have implemented the csp that we cannot execute inline code right but uh, from this tool we can also see that script src allows script from any other source right so if we can provide the script tag and if we load the javascript from any other source it is you know possible that we will be able to find xss or you know execute the javascript code on the application so let's go ahead and try to create something and then let's see how we can you know find xss uh, in this particular scenario Okay, so over here, what I have done is that I have created a small, you know, web application, which is going to serve the XSS payload for us. Okay, like if you take a closer look, let me just show you, give you the exact code. And like overall, what it is doing is that, you know, I have set the static directory to test and whatever is present inside this test folder, I want to serve it as, you know, a JavaScript file. Okay, and then if you take a closer look into this test folder, then you can see we have these three files and this is the file which is you know interesting for us and if i show you what is inside this file it is basically just alert document dot domain okay and since i have configured the web application in such a way that it is going to you know trick the uh, application into behaving that this text file is actually a javascript file using this particular header okay so combining all of this let me just go ahead and type node index dot js and here our web application is up and running and just to show you guys that it is working i'm going to type cost.bpractical.tech where this application is hosted and t.txt just to verify if you are able to fetch the file or not okay hit enter wait a few seconds and as you can see it says alert document dot domain now 
combining all of these things, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy the link over here. And then in this uh, title parameter, I'm just going to remove everything and I'm going to go ahead and use the script finally. So I'm going to type script, okay, src, and then I'm going to give this domain cost.bpractical.tech slash t.txt. And once I hit enter, you can clearly say what it says. It's it just popped up the document dot domain domain uh, variable, right? Which is the same thing that we have written over here. If you go ahead and modify that, let me just stop this and let me go to test and let me just change this from alert document dot domain to alert let's say one. Okay, let me close it out and let me go ahead and start it again. Okay, and if you see when I'm going to reload this right now, you can see it will say alert one. And if I reload this now, you see what it says? It says one. So basically we were able to bypass or find the misconfiguration in the content security policy, which allowed us to execute JavaScript and with the help of XSS first, right? Now what I'm going to do is like, since I've identified this particular payload that it is working, I can simply copy this payload. Like, let me just complete it out. Okay. Like so I'll see, and I'm going to type test and let me close the script tag hit enter it's getting us alert i'm going to copy this whole payload okay and now i'm going to open my kali linux and i'm going to create a new file let's say nano uh, custom.txt this is where i'm going to put my custom payloads okay i'm going to just simply just paste it out like this and let me just remove this person 20 okay and let me just close it out and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the same command, but this time I am going to specify my custom payload file. Okay. Like say custom dot text. And I want to validate the XSS finding, whether the XSS is actually executing or not. I can simply go ahead and type minus capital V hit enter right over here. Let's wait a few seconds. Let's wait. And what you can see is that it says XSS validated on this particular URL, which is very, very, you know, interesting feature of this particular tool, because this will help you to exactly find if your payload is actually getting executed or not. Okay. So this is how you can go ahead and use this tool. Let's say that you have found uh, uh, XSS payload that is working in most of the scenario. You can create a custom list out of it, and then you can use it to automate the XSS finding on a bunch of other URLs as well. Right. Even not even if your payload is not getting executed, you'll get a lot of information about your target, like which of the tags are getting rendered as it is, which of the events are getting rendered as it is, and which of the payloads are getting rendered as it is. So this is something which is very important because this will help you to formulate your XSS payload based on your target. Right. And later on, you can use that payload against, you know, like any other endpoint. So this is something which is very, you know, unique and interesting about this particular tool. So I will definitely re recommend all of you to go ahead and check out XSS first. And uh, just one thing that it also has this XSS custom payloads file, which also has a lot of payloads inside it. So you can also go ahead and use that. But I will recommend you to, you know, always use this particular tool with a little manual as well as a mixture of manual and automated approach, right? Because we have designed this tool, not only like, you know, to automate access finding, but to also help you to, you know, give you proper hints and, you know, give you proper guidance on what you can do in those scenarios where the excesses is not, you know, the typical excesses payloads are not working. Okay, like over here, you can see the CSP was blocking us, right? So, uh, yeah, this is how you can go ahead and use access first into your web application print testing or as well as bug bounty hunting. I hope you have understood it. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. Also, do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity as well as web development. And if you like the way I teach, then I am running three awesome courses on Udemy. So you can just go ahead and check it out. The link of all of these courses are given in the description. And with that being said, keep learning, keep hacking, and thank you so much for watching.